I said before that our tools are over here on the left. And of course this palette, this window can be dragged around so you can keep your tools wherever you want really. And in addition to that, all the tools on here can be dragged and rearranged as you like. I tend to have my pen and my eraser at the very bottom. For the purposes of this, I'm going to keep them in their original positions just so that you can find them easily when I use them as well. So a lot of what I'm going to say about the first tool, we're going to look at the pen tool. Let's click on it is going to apply to these other ones as well, but I want to give you the general idea of how they're set up. So when you click on one, the sub tool menu will show uh, what it contains in addition to uh, just the main tool. So there's these two sections, there's pens. These are all different kinds of pens you can select. And then there's also markers. And the thing about these sub tools is that they can also be dragged out and placed on the menu. And in some cases, it makes a lot of sense to do that because, for example, this this uh, this tool down here has five sub tools under it, and some of them aren't quite related to each other. They're almost totally different, so it kind of makes sense to drag them out, especially if you use them a lot. But going back to our pen, which is like a marker now, so when you when you change the subtool, it changes actually the icon on here. So be aware of that. If you can't find something, it's probably just changed to one of the other subtools. So we're going to try the pens first and let's open up a new page. File new and any size is fine. <clears throat> and we can just use our, uh, our tablet to make pen lines. Now we're going to be able to make pen lines in a lot of different ways based on the settings that we have. And uh, if we look under tool properties, which is right below the subtool, there are several options, but there's actually a lot more options than this. But these are just our kind of default setting options that it gives us. So size is just going to change how big our line is. And if we make it a lot larger, I'm going to show you. You can see that it's a lot larger, but if I uh, press lighter on my tablet, it's actually going to make a thinner line. And if I press harder, it's going to be a wider line. And that is because we have the pen pressure turned on. And we can change that if we don't like that by clicking here. And we have this pen pressure button. If we unclick it, it's going to make all our lines exactly the same width, no matter how hard we press. And then the only way we can change it is by changing the brush size. But we can also activate the pen pressure and change the minimum value. And that's going to change the how small our line can be allowed to become. So when it's a lot higher than like this, I can't make a thin line like I did before. This is about the thinnest line as I can get. But I tend to like it all the way at zero because I like being able to change the line thickness as I go. But it really depends on your style. Like all these settings really depend on how you use your art and what you want your art to look like. So be aware of that. The other ones, um, actually, before I do that, there's a way you can clear this entire picture. Um, we call this the layer that I'm working on. I'll talk more about layers later. But if you go up to here, there's this kind of circle thing. And if you click on that, it'll clear the entire canvas, which is helpful sometimes. And let's go back to our uh, button here. We have other options that can affect how our lines look. Tilt is kind of the angle of your uh, pen on the tablet. And mine doesn't really seem to affect it. I don't think my uh, my pen can pick up that, that tilt. I don't think I have a very sophisticated tablet, but you can play around with it. You may have a better tablet that allows changes like that. The other options, velocity, is going to be the speed that you move across the page is going to affect the thickness of your line. So let me show you what I mean. So if I go, see, I went, I was still pressing down, but it was so fast that it thins out. So that may be a look that you want. Maybe if you're doing uh, water or something, I don't know, but all these have their, their purpose and their, their benefit, but I tend to leave that off. And then let me clear this. And then finally, random is kind of the bumpiness of the line. Um, this can be something you want sometimes for whatever reason. It's just 
again, this, this all depends on the look that you're going for and what kind of effect you're creating or whatever. So the higher that number, the less bumpy it's going to look. So this is hardly even bumpy at all. Okay. But for the most part, I leave random off unless I specifically want that look. Opacity is how uh, kind of dense or how well, how opaque or how transparent your line is. At 100% opacity, it's a black line. As I turn it down, it's going to become more like a faint, almost gray line. And if I can put, I can put multiple layers to build it up. So this may be something you want to do for whatever look, again, you're trying to create. Oops. Anti-aliasing is basically when it's on, I, I usually leave it on the max strongest. That will give you a smoother kind of line. Whereas when it's off, it's going to be kind of a jagged line. And at this distance, you can't tell. I'm going to zoom in. Um, you can hardly even notice, but the one on the right, you can see it's a little smoother. And the one on the left does have a jaggedness to it. Basically, that means that when these pixels end, it's just a clear drop off, whereas this is a more gradual. It, it like kind of tapers it into a, a transparent area. And this will kind of be have its different uses later on when we look at coloring and things like that. But uh, I tend to leave it to the max. But again, this is very uh, a personal choice based on how your your workflow workflow goes. Go back to center and clear this. Stabilization, I tend to like it all the way up. It's going to help make your line look a little more smooth as you as you write. Because when you're working on a tablet, there's you know natural bumps and kind of imperfections. If I turn it all the way down, it's just a little more sensitive to every little bump on the tablet. Now, if I make changes to this pen as I go along, for example, let's say I want to always have my pen at about uh, 73 opacity for whatever reason, if I, if I like that. I can um, go to this wrench right here and click on it and then click on it again. And that will kind of lock that setting so that every time I open it, so if I go to another tool and then I go back to that tool, it's going to always start at 73. But I don't want it to actually be there, so I'm going to change it back to 100. But there, like I said, there's a lot of little tweaks you can make, so you can really personalize your pen, and that'll keep it that way. If you want to revert it to original settings, just click this circle, and that will restore the original settings. But again, I like maximum stabilization and maximum anti-aliasing.